I'd like to do an example of a problem in geometric optics. This one in particular is going to involve two lenses in a row. Now this reasoning is going to be similar to what we do with one lens, uh, and I'm going to assume that you already know how to deal with single lens systems, but our goal today is to figure out what to do when we have more than one lens at a time. And really, the strategy is simple if you believe it. The strategy is simply that you treat each lens one at a time as if none of the other lenses are present. You find the image from the first lens, it becomes the object for the second lens, as if the first lens wasn't there. Uh, it's hard to believe that's what you do, because we, yeah, and it sounds sensible, but when you're actually working through it, it looks weird. We'll see how it works today in this example, where I have a first lens, oh, and I should say, we're making the assumption that these are idealized thin lenses, uh, so we're going to use the thin lens equation we do this analytically, we're going to use geometric optics principal ray ray tracing, which doesn't really work for realistic lenses, but does a decent job. So again, we're going to assume that the first lens has a focal length of 30 centimeters, so a focal point 30 centimeters to the left and its other focal point 30 centimeters to the right um, of the central plane of the lens. And along the same axis, we've got a second lens 40 centimeters away, 10, 20, 30, 40, oh good, I drew it right. Uh, and that second lens is a stronger lens. It has a shorter focal length. It focuses more tightly. So its focal length is 20 centimeters, focal point f2, 20 centimeters to the left, and f2, 20 centimeters to the right. So that, th these are our two lenses. And what I want to do, I'm going to place an object 20 centimeters before lens number one that is 10 centimeters high. And I want to know what will be the position of the final image produced by the combination of both these lenses? And when that final image is produced, where is it? And how tall is it? Is it real or virtual? Is it upright or inverted? All those sorts of questions we ask about lenses, we're going to ask it for this two lens system. So, okay, uh, we'll, do a, we'll do a calculation with numbers eventually, but I want to see the ray tracing story because I am really big on ray tracing when I do these things. And as usual, that means drawing the principal rays for these lenses. And again, the rule with a multiple lens system is that we pretend, we start by pretending only the first lens exists in the universe. We do that, we ignore the second lens completely, we figure out the image position for the first lens. All right, so let's do that. Um, principal rays, I'll, I'll do this relatively quickly because I hope that you already know how the principal rays work. So in particular, uh, principal ray number one, and I'm going to try to draw this well, but I know that when I draw rays without a good, you know, without a ruler, without a really good ruler and everything, it can be hard to get it right. So I know this is going to be only rough. Ray tracing is good for getting a solid concept of what's happening and getting a good estimate of the answer, but it's going to be really hard to get a super accurate answer out of it. All right, so ray tracing. The first step is to draw a line parallel to the axis of the lens. So in our pictures, that's usually perfectly horizontal. From the image position, I'm going to take the tip of my arrow here as my image position, or my object position, rather. And principal ray number one, I draw a line that is perfectly parallel to the axis of the lens until I get to the lens itself, horizontal there. And then I tilt through lens number one's focal point. Not that one, but lens number one's focal point. Got to pay attention to these things. And that ray goes on forever as if lens 2 was not there. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this as best I can. Oh, shoot, I'm already bumping it. Okay, I did a decent job of that. Whoop, shift it off there. Get the idea. Okay, so that is principal ray number 1 from this lens. All right, principal ray number 1. Done. For principal ray number 2, I start from my object point, the tip of my object is my usual choice, and I send a ray that goes straight through the center of lens 1. So, and again, I pretend that lens 2 does not exist in the universe. I'm erasing my object with this. Doing ruler things on a whiteboard is a pain, let me tell you, but I'm working on it. Okay, looks like that's going to do it. Oh, hopefully that'll do it. I'm going to draw this line. I bent it again. Ah. Okay. This is principal ray number two. From the object point through the center of the lens undeflected and off into the distance as if 
lens two was not there at all. That was principal ray number two. Principal ray number three, remember, is the one that is the opposite of principal ray number one. Ray one was parallel to the axis and then went through the focal point of the other side. Principal ray number three should be parallel to the axis on this side and then bend to go through the focal point on this side. That means I want to draw a line from the object through the focal point and I've got a problem because drawing a line from the object through this focal point would go backward away from the lens. So I line it up as if I'm about to do that and then I don't draw that line. It goes just along that line but in the forward direction goes along here, hits there, and then as soon as it hits the center plane of the lens, remember we're assuming it's an infinitely thin lens, even though I've drawn it with width, as soon as it gets there, I now, whoop, let me set this up, I now go parallel to the axis from then on. So try to get this about right, parallel to the axis, and I ignore the existence of lens number two. Okay. So that is my principal ray number three. There we go. I have produced my three principal rays. And to find the image location, I'm supposed to find where those three rays appear to come together if I were an observer looking from this side. Well, they are not coming together. They're spreading apart. So what's that mean? That means there's not going to be a real image on this side where those three rays come together. Instead, my eye which is just a lump of meat and doesn't know anything about where this lens is, my eye perceives those rays as if they came from behind. You've seen this example before. I extend, I'm going to extend my three principal rays backward as if they were going in a straight line as from the direction seen back there. And we'll see how I did. We'll see how these come together. I've got to extend these backward as if they go through the lens in a straight line. So let me let me try to draw these straight. I'll do my best. Um, this one, oh gosh, see, I'm already shifting it. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. So I've got this extended, oh, bumping it again. Uh, this is terrible, I keep bumping this. Okay, something like that. Okay, that is not bad as the extension of principal ray number three coming backward. Principal ray number one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to line up with it, like so. Try to get the direction as best I can. Try to hold the ruler as steady as I can. Um, my, it's hard to do on a board, but I'm going to extend this backward. Same way. Extending backward. Trying not to let my ruler shift. Shoot, I shifted. Okay, there's my extension of principal ray number one. And here's principal ray number two, and I'm going to extend it as well. Line up over here. I try not to look at where it's hitting the others because I don't want to bias my results. Don't want to bias what I draw. Um, okay, that's pretty well lined up. Let me draw, extending this backward. That came together way better than I expected. So, yeah, all right. So I've brought these three rays together, and as you look at it, they don't quite meet at one point. I see an intersection point here, and here, and here. But I'm going to draw a dot somewhere in the middle of all that, like the middle of the little triangle formed by those intersection points. That is going to be the tip of my image. And again, hopefully this is familiar because we're just doing, this is just like it was for a single lens, because it is a single lens at this point. And if I drop a line down from there to be my, the rest of my object, or the rest of my image rather, that is my image position. As read from here, I would say that my image position here, S1 prime, is roughly, um, 10, 20, 30, 40, 55, 58 centimeters. Uh, I should say, really, I should say negative 58 centimeters because it's on the oh, it's on the wrong side, the incoming side. This is a virtual image. S prime has S1 prime is negative 58 centimeters. It's a virtual image on the incoming side 
All right, that's what we got. That is, uh, that, so that's the, that is what one lens would do, and hopefully that part was familiar. But now, now I need to go on and I need to say, wait, I'm now going to do lens two. And here's the trick. For lens two, oh, hey, I drop things is what I do. For lens two, I now pretend that lens one doesn't exist. I pretend the original object doesn't exist, and that this image is the same as the object, is now the object for lens two. I'm kicking my ruler, great. Um, this image is for lens one is the object for lens two. So what I do, I need to figure out what things, what some of my quantities are. So for example, what is the distance from this object to lens two? Well, if I were to draw it on here, it would be from this point over to this point. That's my distance. And what is that? Well, it's going to be the 40 centimeters here plus the 58 centimeters here. So I'm going to get that my distance is going to be about 98 centimeters. Uh, where can I write that down? This is my S2. Oh gosh, it's hard to find a place to write it. My S2 equals, as about, is roughly 98 centimeters. Uh, if I were to write down that formally, if I want an equation for this, I would say that S2 is the distance between the two lenses minus S1 prime, uh, because it's that minus a negative 58. Uh, if the S1 prime had been over here, it would have been 40 minus 20 or something, but instead it's minus a negative, so it's more. So, okay, that's my S2 distance in terms of this. I've got all that. It's about 98 centimeters. Um, I could also figure out my height. I didn't measure the height of this. I should have written that down earlier. My, uh, my initial height was 10 centimeters, and the height of this thing, the height of my image, if I measure it, is going to be... Looks like it is 29 centimeters. H1 prime is about positive 29 centimeters. It's an upright image, upright virtual image here. So okay, that's my that. Those are my results. So H1 prime, that height of 29 centimeters, by the way, is going to equal H2. The height of this image is the height of the object for for lens two. So now I'm going to start from here. I'm going to ignore the original object. I'm going to ignore lens one as if it were missing from the universe. Only lens two matters. And I've got to draw my principal rays again. I've got to do principal rays for this. How's that going to work? Well, OK, how do I want to draw these to distinguish them? I did these in black. Maybe I should do these other ones in like the reddish color that that lens is in, just to, just to distinguish these rays. How am I going to draw this? Well, principal ray number one from this point to this lens goes parallel to the axis. You know what? This line is the right one. I'm just going to draw it by hand, freehand it, because I've got the line there already. So this is principal ray number one, parallel to the axis of the lens, but coming over oh, and, and going straight to there, so straight to that point. So this is principal ray number one for lens two. Uh, got that. And then from this point where that ray comes across, I'm now supposed to bend through the focal point of lens two. Let me see if I can make that happen here without blurring everything. Uh, what can I do here? Principal ray number one comes from this point, bends down. Okay, not bad, not bad. There we go. That is my principal ray number one still coming through. So horizontal parallel to the axis, of the lens and then bending through lens two's focal point. Okay, that's principal ray number two, number one. Principal ray number two starts at my object point, which is the image from lens one. And remember, uh, it, it goes straight through the center of lens two and off into the distance. Ugh, ugh, my meter stick can't quite handle this. Um, I'm going to have to do this in a couple steps and it's going to be a painful process. I feel like I'm going to be like stretching here to make this happen. Uh, trying to eyeball this, trying to get it right, trying to hold it still. Ugh, this is hard. Um, this is easier on paper 
if you're not trying to do a gigantic line across an entire whiteboard. Oh my gosh. Okay. I need to do this to extend over to here. Make sure it's parallel to that line. Hope the line was lined up well enough to go through the center. See what happens. See what happens. Kind of here. Uh, how'd I do? A little too low. Darn it. Okay. Well, anyway, that was whew, that was principal ray number two for lens two. Going straight through ray one, ray two, went that way. And now principal ray number three. <sighs> this time I need to start at my object point, the original image, and go through the nearby focal point until I get to the lens. I can probably line this up a little better this time because I'm not going all the way to the lens first, but it's still going to be a pain to draw. Uh, again, doing this on paper is easier because it's not gigantic. Okay. How good is my flexibility? Principal ray number three. Trying it. Going to here. Oh, I hit. All right. And I just need to extend this until it hits the lens. Remember, ray three continues through that incoming focal point, the focal point on the incoming side, right up until it hits the center plane of the lens, like so. And then from there, it goes parallel to the axis on the other side. So let me just get that set up. Parallel to the axis, I hope. I hope not. I'm trying not to look at where I'm drawing this to because I don't want to bias myself by trying to intersect the other things. These are supposed to be independent rays that should all meet together, and if they don't, that should tell me what my uncertainty is. Oh my gosh, it worked. <laughs> all right, well, there we have it. All three have come together at a point, and I guess I can do this. My point, if I draw up to here, wow, well, no, I, that's even curved. Let me go straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up. Um, I'm going to say that my S2, my position here, is about 1025 centimeters, and my H2, H prime 2, S prime 2 is 25 centimeters, positive, and H prime 2, if I measure this height, how tall is this? Uh, this is hard to measure. I'm getting to there 8 centimeters? Uh, negative 8 because it's upside down. It's on the opposite side of, as my original object was. <coughs> That's what I come up with. So this is how you do ray tracing for a case where you have two lenses in a row. Notice, remember the key thing, that when I traced my rays from my original object and traced them out, I extended them off to infinity as if lens 2 was not there. Then when I found the image point back here, I did my principal rays. I did brand new principal rays. I guess one of them, principal ray one of this one, lined up with principal ray three of the other one, or ex the extension of it. So maybe one of the principal rays is the same, but the new principal rays were completely different than the old principal rays. See, my extended dot, dot lines there are totally different than the two principal rays there. Completely different principal rays. But I do those, and notice I ignored lens one. I just went right through it until I did the principal ray stuff at lens two, came together, and I got my position over there. That's how I do the ray tracing with this. Now, that's ray tracing. If I were going to do this with equations, I would need to use the thin lens equation that we've learned before to check it. And I know I'm low on time. I know this is taking forever. But I want to go through and do a check with the thin lens equation anyway. Let me go through and see what happens here. I want to find, first of all, this S1 prime S1 prime, uh, based on, oh, I should do it this way, based on a thin lens equation, well, that tells me 1 over S1 prime is going to equal 1 over F1 minus 1 over S1. And so 1 over F1 is going to be 1 over 30 centimeters minus 1 over S1, 1 over 20 centimeters. And 30 cent 1 over 30 is 2 over 60. 1 over 20 is 3 over 60. So 2 minus 3 is 1. This gives me negative 1 over 60 centimeters. And so I would find then that S1 prime, invert both sides, is negative 
60 centimeters. That would have been my ideal result. And look, this was negative 58. So I, my, my drawing came quite close to the precise thin lens equation result. In a perfect world, if I weren't wiggling the ruler around and everything, I would have, these would match perfectly. OK, done that. Uh, what about the height? We've learned before that the idea of magnification, magnification of an image is the image height divided by the object height, h prime over h, is what magnification is defined as. I guess that's, that's the definition of magnification. And there's this similar triangle rule that says that's equal to negative s prime over s. And so in our particular case, for our magnification, well, our, that's negative, negative 60 centimeters divided by s was 20 centimeters. Negative of negative is a positive 3. And so h prime 1 is equal to 3 times h1. 3 times, so my, my guess there would have been 3 times 10 would have been 30 centimeters. And my actual measured h prime, h1 prime was 29. So again, this is a very good prediction. Uh, but my, or rather, my cruddy drawing comes quite close to what this magnification predicted by the equations would be. So that's doing the calculation for lens one. That's probably familiar from a single lens problem. How do I go on to do the calculation then for lens two? Now that I, now that I know, I'm going to record this up here. Now that I know that this was really supposed to be negative 60 centimeters, and I know that this was really supposed to be positive 30 centimeters, how do I go on to lens two to figure this stuff out? Well, I'm going to erase this just because I want to leave the picture there so I can compare. Um, I'm going to use the thin lens equation again. And what I need to do, oh, whatever. Um, what I need to do, I need to first use this relationship to find the distance of my object from lens 2. And so I'll do that. I know that S2 is equal to the distance between the two, 40 centimeters, minus S1 prime, which we said was negative 60 centimeters. And that adds up to 100 centimeters. And again, just as, just as 58 was close to 60, 100 is close to 98. So my drawing wasn't quite spot on, but it was good. That's that. So that's my S2. I can do the exact same thing with the thin lens equation as I did it before. 1 over S2 prime is going to be 1 over F2 minus 1 over S2. And for us, that is 1 over 20 centimeters minus 1 over 100 centimeters. OK, and 1 over 20 is 5 over 100. So putting this together gives me 4 over 100 centimeters. Or in other words, that tells me that S2 prime is the inverse of that, 100 over 4 centimeters. Um, or in other words, 25 centimeters. What did I find? That was spot on. I found exactly 25 centimeters to the uh, to however what good my quality of drawing was. So somehow that long, those long lines worked out okay on this board. That came out really well. And again, I can work out the magnification of the second lens. M2, magnification 2, is defined as the height of image 2 divided by the height of object 2. And it's supposed to be equal to negative S2 prime over S2. We can work that out. S2 prime was, so it's negative, 25 centimeters over 100 centimeters, or in other words, negative one fourth. And if that's h2 prime over h2, that tells me that h2 prime should be negative one fourth of h2. Uh, h2 is the same as h1 prime. 30 centimeters is what it was supposed to be. 30 over 4 is 15 over 2 is about negative. 7.5 centimeters. Hey, I got negative 8. Um, it might have been a little over 8 when I drew it, when I measured this. But I got negative 8 here. Negative 7.5 is really close. And the negative sign here means that it's inverted. It's upside down. Whoop. So it's upside down. That's great. I should have commented that the positive sign on S2 prime told me it was on the outgoing side of the lens and therefore a real image. And so I get the same results that I had before. This is a real image. 
of my object, of my original object, it's inverted and its height is, well, its height is negative 7.5, that's 3 fourths of 10. We could have found that all together by doing a total magnification. M total is just M1 times M2, the product of the two magnifications. If I did that, that would be for us, for our numbers, that would give me M1 was positive 3, M2 was negative 1 fourth, and so we get a negative 3 fourths. And sure enough, 10 centimeters times negative 3 fourths is negative 7.5 centimeters. So that overall magnification, just taking the product of the two magnifications, gives us, going from here to here, our final result. It's kind of a drawn out process, but I hope this gives you a sense of how you can use multiple, how you can analyze multiple lenses by doing thin lens equation problem, by doing the thin lens equation for doing it with precise numbers, and also by doing ray tracing with one lens at a time. And the fact they come out similar gives me a lot of confidence that I haven't messed up any of those details. I really like doing both of these. And if any step along the way doesn't, is, if the steps are kind of close, if they're within like 10% or something, I feel pretty good about what I draw, how my drawing went. If they're really far off, honestly, as long as my drawing looks good, I'm going to trust, uh, trust the drawing for rough answers better than the math, because it's much easier to make a math error than to draw this wrong. Once you're good at drawing these, these are, these are my reassurance that my math was right. So with that, that's the end of our double lens example. And any, any multi-lens system works like this. You just do one lens at a time, no matter how many you have, and that'll get you to your answer.